This is part one of a two-part video series dealing with streetlight plans and streetlight calculations for civil engineers. In this video, we will look at creating the streetlight plan. And in part two, we will look at the voltage drop calculations and how to size the wires for your streetlight system. I am in my utility base file and I'm going to start drawing the streetlights, conduit and pull boxes here. The city has specified a maximum spacing on these lights of 180 feet. For this particular sidewalk, the pole base needs to be five foot eight inches from the top face of curb. I'm going to set my first light based on this existing light over to the west. Now the next thing we need to do is put in a pull box. The city has specified that each light will have a pull box and the pull boxes and conduit are going to be 18 inches from the top face of curb. It is a number five pull box. Number five pull box is 22 inches by 12 inches. And then I'm gonna take this pull box lettering and move it off down to the side. And let's put this on the correct layer. This is gonna go under L and structure. Okay, so we have our, we have a light we have a pull box. Now let's go ahead and copy those down the road at 180 feet apart. Now I'm going to connect those pull boxes up with some conduit. And now let's put a boat on that conduit. And let's go ahead and take this boat and copy it down the line. Now, the next thing we need to do is connect our lighting system to the power source. The dry utility designer has given me a um, number six pull box. This is going to be the utility company point of connection. I'm going to draw a piece of conduit here. And let's go ahead and make this piece of conduit three feet long. Trim that off. From the power supply pull box, we run into a control cabinet. Let me go ahead and put that symbol in. Next thing we do is we run a piece of conduit from the middle of the cabinet over to the conduit for our streetlight system. And we're gonna make that connection with a pull box. Let's talk about this control cabinet and what exactly it is. As the name suggests, it's a, it's a cabinet. It's a pad mounted piece of equipment that is roughly four feet tall. It's exactly like your breaker panel in your house. You have a main feed coming in, and then that main feed gets broken up into however many circuits you need for your streetlight system. Typically, the streetlights are broken up into separate circuits. For instance, on our example, we, would, we might have an A and a B circuit. The first light here would be on the A circuit, and then it would alternate. So the second light would be on the B circuit. And then this light would be on the A circuit and the last light would be on the B circuit. The reason the lights are on alternating circuits is if let's say the A circuit went down, the B lights would still be energized and the street would not be completely dark. If you have a bigger system, you might have four different circuits. You might have A, B, C, and D. 
depending on how much you need to split up the load. The other thing that can happen in this control cabinet is the utility company can put a meter. So depending on the arrangement they have with the city or county that you're working in, the utility company might charge based on how much electricity they use. Sometimes the, the streetlights are not metered. That would be the situation where a utility company charges the city or county a flat rate per light. Another thing that you might encounter is the cabinet might have a photo cell. That's basically a light sensor. So when it gets dark, it switches on the system and turns the lights on. You might have a condition where your photo cell is on the nearest light. If that's the situation, then you need to run wiring from this light back to the cabinet so that you have a way to communicate between that photo cell and the cabinet to turn on the entire system. Typically what I see in that situation is you have three number 14s. One thing I would like to mention is you'll notice that I actually draw these structures to their actual size. Like this transformer is drawn to the actual pad dimensions. This cabinet is drawn to its actual size. I like to do this as a way to ensure that the equipment I'm specifying is actually gonna fit where I'm proposing it. Many times, you know, we have a symbol, like let's say we have a transformer symbol, and that transformer symbol is only three foot by three foot. You know, the symbol fits in the space where you're trying to put it, but the actual transformer is nine by 10. It comes to construction, and all of a sudden everybody realizes that that transformer is not gonna fit in the planner, and everyone is scrambling around trying to figure out where they're gonna put this transformer. No one wants to be in that position. On that same subject, make sure that you are paying attention to your grades, where you are placing these pieces of equipment like the transformer and this cabinet. These guys need a flat spot. Let's say you have a two foot bench at the back of this curb, a two foot bench at the back of the sidewalk, and you have a three to one going up through this planner. If you create a flat spot for this cabinet, then all of a sudden you don't have a three to one going going up to this curb anymore. You have maybe a two to one or a one and a half to one, which is probably not gonna work. So you need to plan ahead of time if you are going to need a, a retaining wall around these objects. Okay, so next we're gonna go into the streetlight sheet itself and start labeling this equipment. Let's start with the streetlights themselves. You can see I have an alignment for the center line of street A. I'm going to label those street lights with an alignment label. Okay, and I don't necessarily want the offset, so I'm gonna take that off. Let's drag this up a little bit. And now I'm going to copy this text to the next light. And we need to change this to circuit B. And lastly, I'm going to label the existing light with a station. This particular jurisdiction that I'm working in wants their street lights numbered. I'm gonna grab the keynote block and place it next to the light. And the, the existing light here is number 1052. And I will change that to the rectangle style. Let me copy that keynote and paste it.
Okay, so we have 52, 53, 54, 55, and 56. Now I want to label the pull boxes with a keynote number one. So I will go into my tool palette and I'm gonna grab the keynote with a leader. I will label the conduits with a simple multi-liter. We'll start with this first section of um, conduit here. We're gonna say 1.5 inch C. This will have two number 10 THW and one number eight ground. In the next video, we will discuss how I came up with two number 10s. Let me go ahead and copy this text. Now this section is gonna have three number 10s. I'm going with a one and a half inch conduit just because that's the minimum size the city will allow. And I'm using a number 10 wire because that's the minimum conductor the city will allow. The city always wants a number eight ground. I'm gonna label the electrical connection detail. I'm going to change my annotative scale over to 10. I will bring in my keynote. Okay, let's go ahead and label this cabinet. This is going to be number two. Okay, and we can go up to our keynotes. Okay and I will go ahead and label this electrical service point with the number three. So that's the electrical service point that's been provided to us for this streetlight system. Okay, I wanna label these two sections of conduit here. I will bring in my multi-liter, and this is going to be a two inch C, and it's gonna have three number two wires and one number eight ground. And we will label this section of conduit. For now, we're gonna call it a 1.5 inch conduit with three number 10s and one number eight ground. I believe that is all the labeling we need to do in model space. I'm gonna change the scale back to 20 and hit the regen so the textile sizes correctly. Let's go into paper space. First thing I want to do is bring in a viewport. And let's put this on the viewport layer. Uh, the viewport layer is non-plot. And I want to set this to 20 scale. Okay, let me go into model space real quick and decide on a match line because the entire street is not going to fit on a single sheet. I'm going to find an even station somewhere roughly in the middle. Why don't I use 800. Now I'll go back into paper space. Let me bring my viewport over so it lines up with 800. Okay, so I'll copy the viewport down and then we will slide this over so it lines up with station eight. Now I wanna draw a dividing line between the two viewports. I'm gonna go ahead and copy this viewport down and let's unlock it and let's change this to 10 scale and let's go ahead and find our detail there it is okay go back into paper and i'm going to resize this viewport to get a close-up on the detail and actually i'm going to change i'm going to change this from the viewport to the anna layer so it has a box around it i need to copy this viewport one more time and let's go find our keynotes Okay, there they are. If you're doing a streetlight plan, you're probably gonna have streetlight notes, additional details, legends, whatnot. All that stuff can, can go off to the side or down to the bottom, depending on how your sheet is set up. Okay, let me start adding some more annotation to this project. We want to highlight this area and reference the detail down here.
we have a completed street light plan. Thanks for sticking with me on this video and um, stay tuned for number two in which I will calculate the street light wire sizes and show you how to do that. Thanks for watching and take care. If you found this video at all helpful, please consider hitting the like button and subscribing to this channel. That way you'll be notified as new videos become available. You can check out the blocks that you've seen me use in this video by visiting my website. The link is down in the description below. Have a great day and go do some great engineering.